So as we get ready for our practice, Don't forget to breathe, right? Breath helps keep us out of that stress zone. Deep diaphragmic breathing. Let's touch the bottoms of our feet together. When you touch the bottoms of your feet together, there's, the knees have to bend. There's only one place to go. And as you have done that, you'll notice the back is automatically arched, right? So let's inhale and arch the back even further away from the mat. Exhale, flatten it back down. Butt stays down. This is pelvic tilts. Inhale back, arches further from the mat. Exhale, releasing back down. Pelvic tilts, bound angle in our feet. And now that you know the drill, let's go ahead and bring the arms in. Inhale, arch the back away from the mat. Arms go overhead. Exhale, flatten the back back down to the mat. Arms go back to the side body. Continue matching the breath with the movement. Inhale, arch the back even further away from the mat. Exhale, release back down. And keep your awareness. You can jump it around a little bit. You can move it into the shoulders. You can move it into the back. Also the groin, which we read to you, part of the lymphatic system. You can even work our way to open up the groin a little bit, where either you're doing it on the inhale, or pulling those legs open, or on the exhale. And let's do about five more pelvic tilts with moving arms. And after your last one here, we'll go ahead and hug in both knees. So both knees get hugged into the chest. And go ahead and rotate the ankles five or six times in each direction. Open and close the toes. Point the toes. Crimp the toes. Make sure the breath is going. So we're going to do a restorative pose coming up in a moment or two. Whenever you're ready, let's keep the knees nice and high and lower both knees to the right side of the mat. When you get them down, turn your head to the left, both arms out like wings, and head turns to the left. So if I walked by your mat, I would see your feet relaxed and knees relaxed. Everything just oh, like jello, right? Just releasing here. From here, we'll move into a restorative pose, but give me a few minutes, a few moments. Today we're going to do three restorative poses, a couple more toward the end of our practice. When you're ready, keep the twist, right? That top leg stays nice and high. And see if you can lift up, bend the bottom leg, and lift up with your left hand, grab that bottom foot. Mm, that's your right hand. And then lay back down, cat pulling its tail. Right? Left hand grabs the bottom foot. That's the top foot. And then lie back down. <sighs> right? You're still in the twist, and head is still moving to the right. So you could stay in this pose five minutes. We won't. Head's turning. Did I say to the right? My mistake. Head turns to the left. So now you have a twist combined with a back bend. And restorative poses work with the meridians of the, bi of the body. A lot of acupuncture work with your meridians, where they believe some of the organs of the body function better as you open up these areas. We'll talk about that a little later which ones are affected. This one here doesn't come to mind at the moment. I'd have to look at my book. 
And give me a few more breaths, please. When you're ready, roll back over on your back. Hug in your knees again for a moment. Making a note how high the knees are. And when you're ready, you can lower both knees over to the left side of the mat. Finding a nice spinal twist. Arms can go out like wings for now. Head turns to the right. Establishing a nice twist here as you breathe. As that diaphragm, if you're breathing deeply, massaging liver, kidneys, and spleen. And you should be on your way to a relaxation response. You should all feel reasonably be relaxed as we go through our practice. When you're ready, let's go ahead and do cat pulling its tail on this side. Bend that bottom leg, reach. You might have to lift up with your right hand, grab a hold of that foot, and lie back down. Head turns to the right, and the breath comes in. And try not to lose the twist. That's close enough. You're there. I had a Charlie Morris or something. Perfect. And then breath comes in. So you lost the twist a little, Paul. Mm -mm. That knee goes. Did I hurt you? And you're trying to just relax on the exhale, right? You're trying to release on the exhale. And when you're ready, releasing. Out anytime you're ready. Roll back over on your back and hugging the knees again. This time, grab one hand on each knee. And go ahead and spread. The legs nice and wide will spread all 10 toes. As you exhale, your head and shoulders are off the mat. As you exhale, just release in the groin. Just try to open that groin up. Let's spread all 10 toes. And just give me a few more breaths here. When you're ready, let's release out. Bring your feet to the mat. Knees are bent. Head is back. On the mat, interlace the fingers, flip the palms to the heavens. As you inhale, lift the butt up off the mat, maybe bringing the hands over the head, touching the pinky fingers to the rug behind you. Exhale, release the butt, bring the hands back over the chest. Arch pose with flipped palms, moving arms. Inhaling, butt comes up on the inhale, arms come up. Exhale, release, arms back down. Continue matching the breath with the movement. And let's do about five or six more. If you need more leverage, you can move the feet toward underneath the butt. As you're doing these last two, see who can re remember or who can visualize spider pose. Who remembers spider pose? Whenever you're ready, let's see if anybody can find it. Spider pose. Okay. I thought Lucille would have it. Lifting head and shoulders up off the mat, grabbing nice and high up on near the calves. Let's go ahead and spread the toes for about five breaths. We already busted up the toes pretty good last week. We're going to transition from here. When you're ready, see if you can find half happy baby. Just grab the outside of one foot. The other foot leg is straight on the mat. If it works for you, you can release the head down. And now tick-tock the foot side to side, the leg front to back, even pistoning that foot up and down as you pull the knee down toward the mat. If it's too challenging for you to grab the outside of the foot, just grab the ankle. <laughs> as you open up more of that groin and hip, which we're going to be doing today. We're going to be working with Dragon, which is a hip opener. And that should suffice for now. Let's come back up to spider pose. Spread all ten toes. 
And there's a reason I have you in Spider, as you'll see in a few moments. And then release the toe spread. See if you can find half happy baby on the other side. Breath comes in here as you do the same thing. Tick tock the legs side to side, front to back, and even pistoning that foot up and down as you pull the knee down toward the mat. Awareness comes into the hip and groin and breath continues deep and effortless. When you're ready, come back up to spider pose. Spread the toes one more time. Now unspread the toes, leave the legs in the air, release the head and shoulders down to the mat, arms out like wings. When you're ready, lower both straight legs over to the right side of the mat. When you get them down all the way, turn your head to the left and take two breaths. Windshield wipers, legs come back up when you're ready, lower them over to the left side of the mat. When you get them down, turn your head to the right and give me two breaths. Back on up. Release back down. So you're on your own now. You could inhale the legs up and exhale down the other side if you're strong enough. So that makes four. We're going to double time now to one breath. So now you can inhale, exhale, take one breath, inhale, exhale, one breath, inhale, exhale. And let's do, how many more should we do, Holly? How about three? Holly says do six more. She's making friends fast. So let's do six more. These aren't too bad, are they, Paul? No, they're actually extremely easy. Yeah, well, that's why you need to set the feet all the way down. Oh, okay. All the way down. It's hard. These too easy, Sarah? Too easy? Huh? After your six, take a moment, take a break, take a rest. So every now and then, right, we need to work the stabilization muscles, the core. And the opposite of that is working, strengthening the back. As you take a moment here, you can visualize how you're going to maneuver your body to child's pose. And we don't normally go into child's pose from this position, but we're going to be doing some work on strengthening the back. So see if you can find it. And when you get into child's pose, walk your child's pose toward the back part of your mat. So your feet are facing toward the back of your mat. Just take a moment in child's pose and we'll move into our stabilizations of strengthening the 70 sets of muscles that run up and down your spine.
when you're ready, let's come up briefly to table pose. From table pose, walk the hands about a hand length and a half forward. Lock the arms, lock the arms, lock the arms. Release the groin down. Arms are locked, supporting the weight. Head looking straight ahead. Breath comes in. Cobra. And this time, though, we're releasing down the cobra rather than pushing up to it. Groin is released. You're trying to relax that lumbar, that lower spine. When you're ready, look up to the heavens. Head back, chin up. For three, two, hmm, and one. And then slowly lower yourself down with complete control. Stack the hands, place the chin down on the hands. Take a moment here as you release that lower back some more. When you're ready, half locus. Go ahead and lift either leg up off the mat. And the knee comes up as well. The whole leg. Soften the face and bring in the breath. And release that leg back down. Take a couple breaths to relax when you're ready. Bring that other leg up, half locus, holding it there. Let the breath come in as you bring a little awareness to the lower back. So it's definitely important strengthening the back. As we read to you, chiropractors, if they do an adjustment, strengthening the musculature is good to keep the vertebrae in place. Let's release that leg back down, right? The vertebrae get out of position. It could affect the whole system of the body, right? Not to mention any pain that you might be associated with that. Let's bring both hands under the thighs, both hands underneath the thighs, lift up. And when you're ready, both legs come up off the mat. If you want, you can lift the head, but I'm not too concerned, whatever's most comfortable for you. Full locus. So we're going to do this briefly. We're not going to be here long, but we will tickle, right? We'll tickle these muscles without trying to overdo it. This is full locus when you're ready. Just go ahead and release down. You can bring the hands back underneath the chin, and while you're releasing out, let's spread the legs out bring them off of the mat, right? Feet all the way off the mat. You can release the legs, but just spread them, right? Just like you see in some of those cop movies, right? You're up against the wall, the cop says, spread them. Now let's come into Sphinx pose or crocodile, right? Elbows under the shoulders, right? You guys see Linda here? And when you're ready, push on up. No, no, leave your groin down. Just push straight in the arms. Push your elbows up off the mat. There you will, seal pose, if you can see Holly. And the head's looking straight ahead. Breath comes in. Seal pose, right? Kind of a modified cobra. And you can do different modifications of this. For instance, you can go right into swan pose. Stay where you are with your arms and bend your knees. No, no, keep your groin down. Just bend your knees. Now you've gone into swan pose and you put more weight on that lower back, haven't you? Lift your head up to the heavens and give me three more breaths. Try to lay the head back. Very nice. When you're ready, release down. Stack the hands. Place your chin down on the hands. You can undo the legs. Take a moment. When you're ready, bring the hands under the shoulders, push back the child's pose. As that awareness continues on the lower back, rounding the back. Oh. So we're going to do one more of those. 
right? We've just moved a little bit of the lower body, a little bit of the upper. Now we're going to do some navel poses, right? When you're ready, come back to table pose. See if you can remember how we got there. Walk your hands a hand length and a half forward. Let's lock the arms, lock the arms, lock the arms. Release down, right? Release the groin down to cobra. Head looks straight ahead and the breath comes in. Perfect. And you're breathing nice and deep. Good. The breath is everything. I'm telling you, if you have the breathing going, you have a great yoga practice. Let's lift the head up to the heavens. This will be the last time we'll do this. Looking up, one more breath. And then release down. Stack your hands under the chin. Take a moment. So we'll do three navel poses, and then we'll move on to our dragon series. When you're ready, interlace your fingers behind your head. And when you're ready, everything comes up. Head, shoulders, elbows, legs, and knees. This one's the more difficult because the hands are behind the head. Hang in there with me. The air will get easier. Give me everything you got on this one. And give me three. Good. Two. Hang in there. And one. Release down. You can stack the hands under the chin. So navel pose and modifications are when you lift the trunk and the legs simultaneously. But again, every three or four classes we do these, it has to be done as the back has to straighten. Strengthen, check that. Let's bring the arms out like wings. Everything comes up off the mat. Head, shoulders, hands, knees, legs. Soften the face and then let the breath ride on the breath, right? Three, two, very nice, everyone. And one. Release down, stack the hands under the chin. I'm never one to try to beat up on the body. If I had to describe it, it would be tickling. We'll tickle a little bit in that area instead of overdoing it. And we'll move on to different areas of the body. Last one. Super person. Arms straight out in front of you. And everything comes up off the mat. Head, shoulders, elbows knees and legs breathing here good soften the face and ride on the breath for three two very nice everyone releasing down take a moment when you're ready bring your hands under your shoulders push back the child's pose so Sherry Young comes up to me today and she was talking. She notices her back was a little hunched. And Sherry, I think, is in her late 60s. I'm guessing. Beautiful woman. But she says that she's looking in the mirror the other day and she has a wonderful yoga practice. She noticed her back was hunching. I said, you know what? Sure, we need to strengthen it, but three times a week you should do some back bends, cobra pose, maybe 20 breaths, 20 breaths per, uh, per set, and that'll get rid of that. But Jonathan and I were driving around last week, and I said, look at that woman over there. She's got a little hunch, hunch in her back. And she was probably around 70. If she'd have been doing her yoga, I'm sure we could have straightened her right out, right? When you're ready, let's do some cat and ruddy goose. So come up to table pose. Now, when you do ruddy goose, you want to remember, my back is arched, my head is looking up. But you want to remember, when you go forward, this is as far as you're going. Some practitioners, when they do ruddy goose, they're dropping to here. I don't want that. I want you just coming about this far. So let's do a cat ruddy goose. Round the back, chin goes to the chest. You're going to hold this rounding for three breaths. 
I'm going to count the first two, and then you'll be on your own. Now arch the back. Push the belly to the mat. Look straight ahead. And now lean forward just about six, eight inches and stop. And that's your ruddy goose. You can feel that lower back, right? And you're breathing all that oxygenated blood irrigating. And then round the back, chin to chest, hold for three, and one. Arch the back, push the belly to the mat, look straight ahead, boom. Go six, eight inches forward and hold right there for three breaths. Whenever you're ready, you're on your own. Now rounding the back, hold for three breaths. And you're all, we'll have a different cadence. Everybody's breathing differently. You're on your own. After three breaths, arch the back, push the belly to the mat, and lean forward in ruddy goose. Good. Great way to keep awareness on the lower back. And also a little bit of a strengthener, I think, because you're leaning forward, weight-bearing for the arms. Good way to strengthen the bones. And let's do two more cats. That's the rounding of the back. And two more ruddy geese. Good, Paul. And make sure you're breathing. When you finish your two cats and two ruddy geese, push back the child's pose. Take a break, right? As you're resting, you can visualize coming to kneeling. But you're going to need your block. There's yours. Paul, you got a block behind you. Sarah, you got one to your left. Holly, you've got one to your left. Creel, yours is to your left. When you're ready, come on up to table pose. So we're going to get into a dragon series. Step the right foot forward. You have a block with you, so let's do a little lateral movement. I don't care if the block is near your left knee or near your right hip, but either way, it's, that's in line with each other. And find a nice lateral bend to your side of choice. Let the block hold your hand as you exhale to either side, maybe four or five exhales to a nice lateral bend. When you finish four or five on one side, just switch to block in the other hand, placing it to the other side, and exhale your way to a lateral bend. So we're going to do six movements here from this sequence. Lateral bends, a twist, and we just did forward and back a moment ago. And then let the block go as you find dragon. Dragon, you'll step that right foot forward about a foot length and a half, getting into a deep lunge. Trying to go reasonably deep here. Both hands on the inside of that right foot as you find a deep lunge and the breath just comes in. So this is going to affect the meridians of the liver and some other organs I'll read to you in a moment. Just stay here a moment. You can do some groin drops. You don't have to just stay in one place. If you see me, I'm kind of stretching a little bit with movement. And then stop. Here's your twist. Bring your right hand to the right knee and push that right hand into the right knee. As you exhale, see if you can't look up to the heavens, twisting to your right. Each exhale, 
pushing and twisting. And give me about three more breaths as this affects the meridians of the stomach, spleen, liver, gallbladder, and kidneys. Good job. I love what I see when you're ready. See if you can gracefully step that right foot back to table pose and step the left foot up. When you get the left foot up, we're not going deep though. We're not going deep with the left foot. It's right underneath the knee. So you're a little too far ahead with that left foot, Paul. Come up to kneeling. Grab your block. Because remember, we're doing lateral bends first. When you're ready, take your side of choice. Exhale your way down to a lateral bend. Maybe four breaths, finding your way to your side of choice. Then we'll do a dragon on the other side. After four or five breaths, just float to the other side, right? Hmm. Exhaling your way hmm. to the other side. And now we can play a little with dragon, right? Releasing back out. Now you can step that foot up, right? One foot length is good, but a one and a half is better. And then bringing both hands to the mat on the inside of the left foot. Let's not twist yet. Let's open that hip area. Breathing into those meridians that affect those organs. I need to do a little more research on that. And then when you're ready, take the left hand to the left knee as you sit up a little. As you exhale, push that hand into the knee. Find a little twist. Now in a moment, we're going to change this, but for now, we're going to keep the hand on the knee. And give me one, maybe two more breaths. Whenever you're ready, see if you can gracefully step that left foot back. It's a child's pose. Take a break. Relaxing. And when you're ready, let's thread the needle. So come up to table pose. We'll thread the needle, little twist. Again, take the back of your right hand to the mat. You're going to thread it between the left hand and left knee. Keep threading it. Keep threading that right hand till that right shoulder sets down. Hmm, side of the head sets down. If you're balanced from here, you'll take that left arm behind the back. As you exhale, twist that shoulder open. Each time the exhale hits, even coming moving that head a little bit, looking up as that exhale helps. Twist that back. Thread the needle. You could call this one. It's called by other names. Thread the needle is a good one. Some instructors call our modified pigeon. Modified pigeon, when you put the foot on the knee, thread the needle because you're threading your hands between the legs. But I call that modified pigeon. It's better suited. It's a hip opener, right? When you're ready, release back to table pose. Stand back up. I mean, come back up on all fours and then thread that left hand between the right hand and right knee, right? Left hand threads. Left shoulder sets down. When you think you're balanced, take that right arm behind the back and just work with the breath, right? Just Hmm. Exhale your way. There's no rush here, right? You're exploring your body. You're in that relaxation response, and you're just slowly opening up, you're not trying to, to muscle your way. You're just twisting a little bit, right? Are you going to go any further for me today?
And when you're ready, release back to table pose and push back to child's pose. Okay, so we're moving into a little more work and then we'll wind down. But we're going to come up to downward dog in a moment or two. Finding another dragon. And then we're going to do one sun salutation B today before we begin to wind down. So when you're ready, take a peek from table as you find out what I'm going to ask you to do in a minute. In a moment, you'll come to downward dog. After a while, I'm going to ask you to come to tripod. This is tripod. Now, you can keep the knee bent or straight. You know, it makes no difference to me. But after a, a while, I'll ask you to step the right foot up to dragon. Okay? You can find a deep lunge, maybe even deep in it. See, and then you'll find dragon. Okay? So when you're ready, and then we'll go from there. When you're ready, go ahead and push up to downward dog. You can lift your heels up one at a time as you warm up the calves and the breath comes in as you're improving the functionality of all the organs of the body as they're moving. And as we read today, dramatically moving around that lymph fluid in the body. Inversions help you do that. When you're ready, let's bring the right leg up to tripod no, 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 lift it up in the air, holding it there for a moment or two, the right leg as we strengthen, right? It takes a little bit of strength to hold this up, so I'm hoping for three more breaths. Whenever you're ready, swing that right foot up to the hands if you can. Step it way up to the hands, as far up as you can if you want to find dragon now, or if you want to wait till later, but... Take a moment to see if you want to get to a real deep lunge for dragon. And then set that back knee down, right? And then find dragon, right? If your back knee is down, then you should be able to step that foot forward to dragon again, right? That's what I was asking you to do. If it's not already there, then move it to there. Take the right hand on the knee as you turn. Take about three breaths to get the shoulder turned and I hope you have balance because now this time let's bring the right arm up to the heavens and as you exhale maybe twisting a little more than what we had done the first time you're looking up to the heavens I had two women tell me yesterday two women that they're so happy they're able to turn their shoulders turn their heads and back up in the car one said it saved her from a back back end because one car was backing up as she was backing up as she turned and she stopped that when you're ready let's take that hand back down on either side of that front foot maybe step the front foot back a little bit because you're going to go back into downward dog you'll curl the toe up in the back foot right curl the toe of the back foot bring the knee off the mat lift the knee off in the back back to lunge right and then step the front foot back to downward dog adjusting in your downward dog Breath comes back in, right? Good. And I'm not trying to kill you, so let's bring the left leg up in the air, tripod. Holding it up there. Left leg goes up, Sarah. Good, holding it. Hanging out here for a moment. How's it going over there, Creo? One thing for sure, from this position, you can't fan your shoulders and tell me to cool it off, right? Step that left foot up to lunge. Step it all the way up to the hands. If you can't get it there, reach it on back. Now, if now you're in lunge, right? If you want to go into a deeper lunge and get ready for your dragon, you can do that, right? You can separate the feet farther apart if you want. When you're ready, set that back right knee down to the mat, uncurl the toe. And if you're not, then now you can find dragon. Step that left foot up and drop both hands down on the inside of the left foot and dragon. You can release the head a little as you stretch out the hip, right? So dragon is a deep lunge, right? Take a moment here. And then take your left hand on top of that left knee. Take about three breaths to get a little twist going, right? As you exhale, 
pushing that hand into the knee. Find a little twist, looking up to the heavens. Now that you have a twist established, bring that left arm to the heavens. And each time you exhale, open a little more, right? Each time the exhale hits, open it, right? Twisting it a little more. Give me two more exhales. And then bring both hands down to the mat. Curl the toe of the back foot and lift that knee off the mat. Back in the lunge, right? And now see if you can't step the back foot to the front foot. Forward fold. Both fingertips by the toes. I guess I could have told you to come out of dragon, but you figured it out. And hang out here in forward fold. Now, when you see me do sun salutation B in a few moments, my forward fold is just that. The trunk is trying to press into the thighs. The head is trying to touch the knees, right? You're folding. So we've always talked mainly about stretching the back of the legs. And we're going to be getting into this next year coming up, trying to touch the head to the knees. When you're ready, come up to standing. We're up. We made it. We made it. All right, I'm going to set up the balances, and then I'll cool it off. So our airplane today with, the, with uh, splits. So airplane, the arms are behind. As you find airplane, you're trying to bring the trunk and the leg parallel with the floor. So once you find airplane, you can hang out here for a bit. And then after a while, come down to lunge. Now, I like to bend the top leg because it's, you're able to push it up more, stretching this whole bottom leg. You can do that for lunge, or you can grab the ankle, pulling the head toward the knee. When you're ready, have fun. I'll cool it off. Airplane to lunge. Remember, most feet enjoy a harder surface, so since this is a balance sequence, you may consider going to the rug or the floor. And just do the best you can. It's a nice line, Paul. Yeah, and just make sure you're doing both sides, both legs. If you're breathing, that helps that relaxation response, right? We read deep diaphragmic breathing, so that also helps your, your balance. And let's take another 45 seconds. So if you haven't already, do the other side one more time, right? Nice line, Lucille. It's a nice plane. Oh, we could have just as easily had Sage here. Jill, Judy, and Denise. 30 seconds. <coughs> the beginning. Nice, Sarah, that's a nice line. Go to the splits, right? Hands down to the mat. See if you can get that back foot up higher. 
stretching the back of that leg. Beginning to wrap it up if you haven't already. You better? It's at 72. Okay, so Linda, wrapping it up. Okay, I'm gonna do one sun salutation B as in boy. And then you all will do one. We have 10 minutes, okay? And um, then we'll wind down with some uh, restorative poses that we've never done in this building. Square, we'll do, and we'll do deer pose, okay? So I'll do one sun salutation, and then you'll all do one the full, I'm hoping full, um, full speed, right? So take a moment, you guys get a break. Now you'll stay here five breaths, I won't. Then you'll inhale quickly, quickly move the feet. See how easy that was? Matching the breath with the movement. Here we go, front of the mat. Front of your mat, Sarah. I'll walk you through it. Inhale, bend the knees, interlace the fingers. Looking up to the heavens as you try to stretch. Exhale, fingertips all the way down to the mat as you stretch the back of the legs, right? Head releases. Leave your fingertips on the mat. Inhale, lift your head. Exhale, step back as far as you can with one foot. Then the other foot steps back. Exhale your way down, 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 down. Leave the groin down. As you inhale, lift your head up to the heavens. Upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Adjust your hands and feet. Inhale, step the right foot all the way up to the hands and try to turn that heel down in the back. Come up to heavenly warrior. Turn that heel down. No, turn it down and then come up to standing. There you go. Heavenly warrior, lay the head back, interlace the fingers, right? Exhale, hands down to the mat on either side of the front foot. Step it on back to down, step it back, step the foot, and then down, 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 down. Keep the groin down as you inhale, upward dog, head looks up. Exhale, downward dog, pushing up to downward dog. Inhale, step the left foot up to the hands. Get it up there quick. Turn that heel down in the back to the right. Come on up to warrior. Interlace the fingers. Lay the head back. Heavenly warrior. Left knee is bent, right? Left knee is bent, but I like it. I like it. Both hands down to the mat. Step that front foot down, back, and go down, down, down one more time. Inhale, upward dog, head looks up. Exhale, downward dog. Adjust your feet and downward dog, you're fine. Just adjust the feet. Five breaths. So we turn the corner. Five breaths. So in downward dog, you can, you can push your heels down toward the mat. Some of you are on your toes. Let those heels go down. When you're ready, inhale. Step either foot up to the hands and then the other foot comes with it. Leave the fingertips by the toes. Inhale, lift the head. Head lifts. Good. Exhale, head down as you open up the back of your legs. Right? Inhale, come up, 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 up. But bend the knees as you interlace the fingers. 
a little fierce pose. Exhale, hands turn to palm, uh, prayer hands as you release back down to the chest and stand up. Good. Very nice. Excellent job. That's sun salutation B. Were you making a face? I was laughing at her. Why? She it's too cold in here now. She was going shoo. Nice job. Maybe your first B ever. Just as gently as a cat, place your tail upon the mat. Now, bend your right leg in front of you and your left leg behind you. We're winding down now. Great job. Okay, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to set you up while I cool it off in here. We don't want it too cold. Right leg in front, left leg behind. So a little more open with that back foot. There you go. Good. Okay. So let's bring the right arm up. Take your left hand, grab that right wrist, and as you inhale, you're stretching the right side. As you inhale, you're lifting that right hand up. And that's a good stretch. Keep the stretch taut and exhale to the left, finding a lateral bend. Exhale a little more each time. Now, release the left hand. Bring your left hand to the left ankle and just collapse more to the left. Just go a little deeper and just let it go to the left. And that's a nice lateral bend. Come back to center. Take your, I'm turning to my right now. I'm taking my left hand to the right side, right? Right hand behind you on the mat. Inhale, sit up tall. Push that hand into the mat. On an inhale, sit up straight. Exhale, twist to the right. Next exhale, twist a little more to the right. Trying to look behind you here. And the breath comes in deep. Three. Right, as we strengthen your respiratory system. Two. And one, release back out. Okay, now let's do deer. This is a restorative pose. We'll tell you about the benefits. Turn to your right again. And see if you can get both hands behind you. Right? Yeah. Turning to your right, to the side, or you're, you're trying to fight a little to the behind. And now you're going to drop the forearms down behind you or to the side, finding a twist. Let the breath come in as you try to relax and release. And then maybe you can even go down where your head is touching. Maybe the hands are under the forehead and you're relaxing here in deer pose. So this is a restorative pose. You could stay five minutes. We won't. Very good for the meridians, not only the, obviously the hips, but the gall, gallbladder, liver, kidneys, stomach, and spleen. And stay with me. We have about five minutes left of class. We're going to do these winding down restorative moves as we finish our practice. When you're ready, let's come back up. I have never seen a deer in that position. Switch the legs. Left leg in front, right leg behind. Right? Left arm comes up, right hand grabs left wrist. Right hand pulls left wrist up. About three breaths, right, as you stretch the left side of the body. Each time you inhale, lift up. And we've got about three minutes, so stay with me. Now keep the tautness of the left side as you exhale to your right to a nice lateral bend, right? Each time you exhale, Lateral bend to the right. Hmm. And if you remember, we're collapsing here, right? One more. Exhale to the right. 
Now just release the hand, bring the right hand to the right ankle, right hand to the right ankle, and collapse further to the left. You were going this way, just keep going to a lateral bend. You're collapsing, right? Right? You're just letting it go further. Okay, Paul, we have the left leg in front, right leg behind. I think you had that last time, didn't you? Yeah, then you go the other way. Come back the way you yeah, you started off the wrong way. So you bring your left hand to the left ankle and go that way. When you're ready, releasing out. Let's twist first. So bringing your left hand on the right thigh. Right? Right hand behind you. Check that. Go the other way. Bring in your left hand. Bring your right hand to the left thigh. Left hand behind you on the mat. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, twist to your left. Okay, you're going this way. You're twisting that way. Twisting to my right? Yeah. Is it to my left? You're twisting to your right because you have the different legs. Okay. Breathing here. Everybody's looking good. You're fine. We're twisting toward the bent leg in front. Right? We're twisting that way. Looking behind you. Breathing here. When you're ready, you can release to the front briefly, right? But now we're going to turn and get both hands behind for deer, right? Remember, both hands turn to the left, unless your name is Paul. Getting both hands behind you on the mat, dropping down to forearms. Finding a place. From forearms, I like to breathe a few breaths. So you're able to release, relax a little bit, and then maybe... Dropping down the head on the hands and just let that breath come in. So, Paul, you're to the right. There you go. Breathing here in deer pose. And this may be our last one. I don't want to go over time. Yeah, this, we have another one, but we'll have to get it another time. And give me about three more breaths, maybe four more breaths. Well done, everybody. When you're ready, let's release out and find the most important pose in all of yoga. I definitely need you to hug in the knees. Okay, we've been twisting. You definitely have to hug in both knees for at least six to ten breaths. Beyond that, if you need more attention, right, you can lift, bend the knees, lift the butt up off the mat and arch pose if you need that. Otherwise, Let's find the most important pose in all of yoga. As you slowly awaken from the old to the brand new, take all the time needed. Stretch out any way that works best for your body. Eventually, mindfully, make your way to a comfortable seated position. It's a wonderful effort. We need to do more of those sun salutation bees, don't we? Let's bring our hands together into the heart center, as always. Thank you all for a delicious, delightful effort sharing your practice today with me and with each other. Our closing today is from Proverbs. Let wisdom come into your heart and knowledge be pleasant to your soul. I hope the rest of your day is cheery. Namaste.